Hello, I'm going to show you how to make the Fleur Lacy Trellis Cowl. And um, it's actually a, a much larger piece, but I folded it because uh, we're going to make a cowl out of it this size today. And so this is what it would look like. And the reason it has its name is we have Fleur Stitch right in here. And then we have my lacy trellis stitch, and then we have my fleur stitch again right here. So you can make it actually any width you want. You just get a wider loom than the one I'm using. And if you want to make it longer, all you have to do is lengthen the lacy trellis stitches in here, and they're the easier one to do. So I've got, I did three and a half inches of the lacy trellis stitch. So when you're doing it, you would just do more inches of the lacy trellis and then you could get a longer one. You could even make it long enough to slip over your head if you wanted to. Okay. So it's actually got a, a nice stretch to it um, both ways. And, um, oh, I should open it up a little bit so you can see the stitches better. I mean, it's really, really, they're both really pretty stitches. So, there we go. Okay, so then we just make a slip knot and we slip it on the beginning peg. And then we're going to cast on doing a chain cast on. And so we just take the working yarn, slip it under, slip up a loop, and then the loop goes behind the number two peg. We can make the loop bigger. And then we just take the working yarn here, slip it through the loop, and tighten it. And then we can pull on this to make it tighter, and in my case, I can actually just come around and slip it on there to keep it tight. Um, but you can just keep it tight any way you want or, or not bother. You can tighten it up at the end. And then we take this loop, put it behind, and we just keep pulling the working yarn through. Behind the next peg, pulling the working yarn through the loop. Behind the next peg, pulling the working yarn through the loop. And I always go back and check my tension and make sure that it's tight because we don't want to have big, big loops there. But uh, I want to be able to knit it over the peg. So my tension looks good. And we're going to be using, um, we're going to be using this edge here like I have in here. And that will prevent it from curling or um, getting, uh, you know, weird at the bottom. And... Um, it gives a nice border and what it'll do is it'll hide any loose loops that you might have in your cast on. You don't even see them. If you look here, that's what it looks like. So there's no loose loops anywhere. So that's what we're going to do on our edges. Oh and the other thing um, is I'm using James C. Brett yarn. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not because this isn't my first take of this video, but it is um, it is James C. Brett Marble Yarn, and it's about the same uh, width of something like a Barcelona yarn or a Premier Puzzle yarn, so it's a thinner, bulky, but it works really nice for this pattern because it's a, it's a more lacy pattern. So we just go along tightening this up as we go and casting it on. So I'm just going to meet you at the other end here and show you how to um, attach that on that end. Okay, so I've just put the last one on and now we need to connect it to this starter peg. So all we do is we put the loop over and pull it tight. And then we just knit it over and we're now cast it on and our work is secure and on the loom. Now the next row we're going to do is a row of owl eye stitch. And um, as I show you owl eye, 
what I'm actually going to do, because whenever I have owl eye, I really like to hide this in the owl eye, because you can actually take this and put it in the owl eye, and then you don't have to uh, weave it in after. And it hides it in, and you can't see it the way that I do it. So you don't have to do that. You can wait till the end and weave it in. Um, do whatever you'd like. But I'm going to start by going over peg one like that, just putting the working yarn over and knitting it over. Then this is where I'm going to join this one in. So I'm just going to lay it over peg two. I'm going to rewrap peg one by going behind it. And this is how you do owl eye. You're always on peg one. You go over peg one and two and knit them off. And I'm just going to add this yarn into it. So I'm going to knit them off now. And then I'm going to take the yarn we're adding in and put it over the next peg. Now we're on peg one. We're going to go over peg one and two. And I'm going to take this yarn with me and just knit it over. And again, I'm going to put this yarn here. I'm going to come from behind peg one over peg one and two. And then I'm just going to knit them off. Now this works with this kind of yarn. I wouldn't use the, this. Um, to hide the yarn if I had a really bul heavy bulky like a number six or even with charisma I wouldn't use this I only use this for the thinner bulkies and um, worsted weight because it you won't see it okay and so then we go over we're behind peg one we go over peg one and two and just knit them off Okay, we lay this over the peg again. We're at peg one, we go behind over peg two, joining that other piece of yarn and knitting off and putting the other piece of yarn over the next peg. We're at going behind peg one, over one and two, and then just knitting them off. And then behind and across, joining the other yarn we're hiding and knitting it off. And then at this point, I'm just going to leave it and I'll cut it in a little while. We're on peg one. We go behind peg one and two and just knitting them over. And that's all we do is a row of the owl eye stitch. When you're doing my owl eye stitch, it's important to be loose. It looks better loose. And there's no reason to struggle putting your stitches over when you can just be loose. So I'll show you how loose I am as I wrap this one, okay? I'm loose. I'm really loose when I do it. Nice and loose. As it tightens up when you put these two pieces over. So there you go. So just finish going around the loom and then we'll meet up close to the starter peg and start the next row together. Okay, so here I am near the end of the row. So we're behind peg one. We go over peg one and two, knit it over. We're on peg one, behind peg one, over peg two, knit it over, but we're not gonna actually knit over peg two because this is our starter peg for our next row. So by doing it the way I just did it, we put two knits on this peg and we want that because we have two knits on all the other pegs and we want them to match. We don't want to create a hole by having less work on the peg right here. Okay, so now we're going to start our next row and our next row is a row of purl. So to do purl, you take the loom hook, put it into the loop, scoop up the yarn and then you have a loop and then what you do is you pull up all the work attached to the loop so that it goes over the peg and slip the loop back on from the back and tighten and hook through the working yarn or through the yarn on the peg scoop up the working yarn and then just take it over the top and tighten it so into the peg, scooping up the yarn, over the peg, tighten. Scooping up the yarn, 
over the peg tighten. There's lots of videos on YouTube showing you how to do a purl stitch. So if you need to look at more videos on YouTube to figure out the how to do the stitch, go ahead. But we'll just finish this purl row and I'll meet you up here for the next row. Okay, so I'm just finishing off this row doing my purls. Okay, and so now we've done the purl here. Here's the next peg and we're going to start doing the owl eye stitch again. And we're going to do one more row of owl eye, one more row of purl, and then we're going to go into the next stitch, the floor stitch. Now to start the owl eye, we go over peg one, knit it over, then we go behind peg one, over peg two, and knit them off. We're at peg one, we go in front of peg one, over peg two, nice and loose, knit them off. On peg one, wrapping peg one and two, knit them off. On peg one, wrapping peg one and two, knit them off. So you're going to go all the way around the, the loom the same way we did here where you end it so that you can start and you have the two two knits on there so that you can start with your purl row. So go, go ahead, do your row of e-wrap, do your second row of purl, and uh, well the second time you do purl, I mean we're, we're doing a total of four rows. We're doing what I call um, the, the uh, it's one of my curvy stitches um, and I really like it but we're not doing enough to, <laughs> to really see the pattern much but because it is kind of curvy yeah, it, my curvy wave stitch it blends in with the chain and looks really really nice so as I said go ahead finish your row of owl eye do a row of pearl and I'll meet you up to start doing the floor stitch Okay, so now we're going to do our fleur stitch. And fleur stitch consists of three rows. We have one row of e-wrap and two stitch, which I'll show you. The second row is e-wrap and two stitch alternating. And then the third row is owl eye, which you already know that stitch. Okay, so every time we do the first row, we're going to be wrapping peg one and peg two together. And every time we do the second row, oh sorry, peg one and peg two, these two we're going to be wrapping together because I'm going this way. So peg one and peg two. And then when we do the second row, we'll be doing peg, um, this was a 40 peg loom, so peg 39 and peg one. Now if you're on an odd loom, you're going to have a peg here when you go around and e-wrap all your two pegs together. So you're going to have an odd peg here that isn't wrapped. So when you start your next row, you'll be wrapping that odd peg with peg one. So that's the only thing you'll be doing different is your second row, you'll be doing those two. Okay, so how we do that is we're going to e-wrap peg one and two together just by, I'm going to move this up close. We're going to go behind peg one and two in front of them, behind to peg four and wrap three and four together, behind and wrap the next two peg pair together, behind and wrap the next two peg pair together, and wrap the next two peg pair together. And you want to keep this nice and loose. So, so loose you feel like it could fall right off like that. It just fell off <laughs> when I did that. But you want it to be very, very, very loose because it will tighten up when you do the next row. And if you feel it's getting too tight, you can just take it and loosen it up. And if you get tight, you don't have to worry because we're only going to be doing two rows of it before we do the other stitch. But um, so we're not doing a lot of rows of it where it gets really important then not to tighten it up, but still keeping it loose will give you a nicer stitch and be easier to knit over. So we just keep wrapping our two pegs together all the way around, just like that. Nice and loose, see? 
easy to go back and loosen them up just by doing that all the way down. And there we go. We've done it all the way around. Now what I do is I actually knit over those two and these two so that I can mark my beginning row so I always know what I'm doing when I'm doing these in case I have to put the work down and have stuff happen. I get back and go, whoa, what was I doing? I'm already marked which how I'm going to do the next row. And um, you can mark it any way you want. Put a band over it, um, knit over this stitch here to hold it, hold the working yarn in place, whatever you want to do. You just use any system that you have for remembering. I just offered you that one. And um, then we just go around, knit them off. And I'm just going to pause it because it's pretty boring to watch me knit them off. Okay, they're all knit off. And so I'm back here. So now I'm just going to wrap my next row. So I'm just, here I am, I had these together. And I just keep wrapping the alternating peg pairs. And if you ever do get lost and, 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 you, and your marker didn't work, you can actually look at them. And you can tell, like here, you can see that these two are wrapped together. There's all the work there. And you can see these weren't. And you can see these two are wrapped together. So you can see. So I'm just going to go in. Since these two are wrapped together, these two are wrapped together. I know these two will be wrapped. So you can also tell by looking. And I'm going around, staying loose. all the way around. Just make sure I'm staying loose. Yep, nice and loose. Okay. So then we just, I just knit these off just to secure them. I like to knit them off first anyway. That's what I do. And then this yarn is secure here coming out of that. So I'm just going to leave it. And then I'm just going to knit them off. And again, I'm just going to pause. So you can go ahead and knit off. Okay, so here we are. And our working yarn is way down here. And we don't want to wrap over anything else because we want all this edge to be pretty invisible. And the nice thing about any of these stitches, um, fleur or lacy trellis or even my tic-tac-toe stitch, is it's really easy to make this side so you can't even tell where the back is. I like that about that because some stitches are hard to do that with. So what we want to do is move this so that we're coming from over here. So it's the same as what we did. So all we have to do is we can lift this working yarn off the peg, put this behind, and then put the working yarn back on. Or what I like to do, because it's easier, is just stick my hook into here, pull the working yarn through like I'm doing a purl, and then just flip that over like that and pull, and you're behind the peg. So it's a lot easier. Now we only go behind um, the one peg to hit our first peg. And so it'll be the same length as all the other stitches that we do. And then we're just going to go into Owl Eye. And we're just going to go over, just like we start Owl Eye always on the one peg. And then wrap that peg and go into peg one and two. And knit them over. Run peg one around peg one and two. And knit it over. And that completes the sequence for the Fleur stitch. So we do... We're going to do two complete things of fleur stitch. So you're going to do, after you finish this owl eye row, you're going to do this e-wrap and two sequence exactly the same, then another row of owl eye, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll start the next stitch. Okay, so here we are. And what we've done is we did our bind on. And then we did our 
our rows of owl eye and pearl giving us this this edge and then we did our two rows to get our fleur stitch and here they are here's the fleur stitch and here there we go now you can see it here's the fleur stitch in here so there it is and um, it, it's time to cut this so I'm just going to pull it just a tiny bit cut it off and um, you can't really see where that was you look here you look here you look here it all looks the same and um, let's see where's our starter peg our black peg okay our black peg was here so we did it from here to here so here's where we did it and here's what it looks everywhere else so it just very nicely just hid the yarn worked right into it and secured everything so that's why I like to do it with the owl eye stitch okay so we finished our sequence of those two now we do the lacy trellis stitch and I'm going to do it till it measures about three and a half inches um, so this is where you might make your modification if you wanted to lengthen the lacy trellis and if you're going to have it really long over your head you might even want to do one more sequence of the fleur pattern but to do the lacy trellis it's much easier and the reason it's easier is we're going to be doing the same stitches but what we're going to be doing is a row of the e-wrap in two and then a row of owl eye that's it there's only two rows in the sequence now you ended with owl eye so the next stitch is the e-wrap in two to start the sequence and we're always going to wrap one and two we're never going to alternate it it's always going to be wrap one and two then do the owl eye come back and uh, wrap one and two so I'll do the first sequence with you and so we're going to wrap e-wrap in two going over peg one and two going over peg three and four and just all the way around the loom keeping it loose but it's not going to tighten up so we don't have to keep it as loose as we were keeping it although it won't hurt you to have it really loose but it's not going to tighten up because we're only doing the one row and then going into the row of owl eye and so just e-wrap around, take them off, and I'll meet you up at the end to do our row of owl eye. Okay, so I've knit off the e-wrap in two, and then we go into doing their owl eye. So our stitch ended here. We just go over in front of peg one, put it over peg one, wrap one and two, and go ahead and do your owl eye row. And then when you come back around here, this will be the last peg you do and you'll be going over this one peg one and peg two and then rewrapping peg one knitting it over and then come up, coming over here and doing your e-wrap and two stitch and so that's all you do keep doing your row of owl eye your row of e-wrap and two until you get the length you want I'm going to go to three and a half inches but go go longer if you want to have a, a longer um, taller cowl and we'll meet you up when we're when we're ready to start the next sequence okay so here I am and I've done all of the lacy trellis rows that I want to do so now we go back and we do two sequences of the fleur stitch now what's important with the way we're going now is that your last row of the sequences you are doing here needs to be owl eye so if you ended on one of the e-wrap and twos do a row of your owl eye and then um, the way we're going to do um, the stitch this time because what when we started we started we we did the cast on and then we did the the, the curvy stitch there but um, when we got up here we started with the e-wrap in two so we want to end with the e-wrap in two when we come up here so it'll be the same as it was on the beginning so the sequence we're going to do is for, for this this time is we're going to do one row of owl eye um, and you'll finish with the owl eye and then you're going to do your e-wrap in two then your alternating e-wrap in two and then your owl eye and then your 
E-wrap and two, and you're alternating E-wrap and two, and you're going to end with the second E-wrap and two. So the sequence is one row of vowel I, the E-wrap and two, and then the alternating E-wrap and two, and you do that twice, and then we'll meet up for the bind off sequence. Okay, so now I've done my two sequences of floor stitch. So here we are, and we've done our, our lacy trellis, and then there's floor in there. And now we're just going to do um, our sequence in here before we do the final bind off. So to do that now, to reverse what we did in the beginning, we want to end with pearl right before the cast off. So we're going to go... Um, Sorry, just had a bit of an interruption there. So we cast on, we went pearl owl, owl eye, pearl owl eye. So we're up here and we've just finished the last of the two double E wraps. So now going back, we're going to do a row of owl eye, a row of pearl, a row of owl eye, then a row of pearl. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll do the cast off. Okay, so now that we're done that sequence, we're ready to do our bind off. So all we do is take our working yarn and go around the loom three times so that we want to make sure we have enough yarn, which I did, and then you just snip it off. And then, uh, yeah, we're almost there. We just have to bind it off now. And the bind off we're going to do is, a, is an extra stretchy bind off. So we need a needle. So you're just going to thread your needle into the yarn and this be a little awkward at first because we have to work with a long piece of yarn but as we go around and we use up a lot of the yarn it won't be so awkward anymore okay it is a long awkward piece of yarn there we go Okay, so what we're going to do is we have the working yarn coming out of this white peg here. So we're going to start by going down our black peg and pull the working yarn through. There we go. And we're going to go up our white peg. And we're going to pull it snug. And now that we've done that, we're going to go in between the two pegs we just worked, the white and the black, and bring it around behind the black. And we're going to go down this peg right here. The new peg, we'll call it. And pull it through and tighten it and we want to keep it nice and tight okay and now we've come down there we go back up the one before it so we're back up and then we snug it up and then we go in between the two pegs we just worked and and behind it in front i mean you know right around behind this one and then we go down the next peg so we're always going down the new peg, up the peg before, and tightening it up all the time as we go, and then in between the two pegs we just worked so that we can go down the new peg. Down the new peg, up the peg before always tightening keeping it tight and behind and then down the new peg up the old peg in between them tightening down 
around the new peg. Up the old peg. In between them and tightening. So you're just going to do that all the way around and I'll meet you up when we get uh, back to our get back point. Okay, so we're back um, and um, I've just gone around. <coughs> I'm going to go down the black peg. And up and around and down the white one and and then we can just take it all off and then we'll um, carefully take it off as we go around and we're almost done pop it off very carefully because these are going to be our loops at the end. I like this bind off because it uh, matches really good with the cast on we did. Okay. Like take the black one off and then this one carefully and we have our uh, needle connected here. Okay, so then we're just going to fasten this off. So you see we're coming through here. So we're just going to go back in here. There we go. And then we can just weave this in. So then we're just going to weave this in. And it's going this direction, so I'm going to weave it in this direction. And I think I can cut this a little bit shorter. It'll be more easier. There we go. And we want to do that on the inside, so I'm going to make sure that I have this through to the inside. There, just like that. And we're just going to um, just weave it through a few Places. And we're going to do that along um, the part where we did this again because it's too lacy and so it'll hide better in there. There we go. And I'm going to tie a knot somewhere here where I can kind of hide it in here. There we go. And then just weave it back through a few threads. Like that. And then just cut it off. And there we go. And so then we want to stretch this out. So I'm going to stretch it out this way first. And then I'm going to stretch it out this way. And get these things out of the road here. There we go. Stretch it out this way, <laughs> including the loom hook. Oh, and the needle. <laughs> and stretch it out. 
and there we go look at that there's our there our cowl and um, here's our bind bind uh, off and usually I just go along a little bit like this to get it um, there and this bind off right here you can see how well these edges match see that they're bind off and how well it matches the edges and then um, we want to look at um, how is the stretch here compared to the stretch here and so there's our stretch this is our cast on here's our bind off they both have the same amount of stretch and uh, there it lays very nice so there you go and I hope you enjoyed making this and um, yeah, I will see you again next time.